My name is JT Parr, and I'm traveling the country to interview geniuses and find out how the world works. Everyone's been freaked out about the existential threats posed by artificial intelligence. All this negativity was bumming me out, so I decided to talk to someone in the field to see if all the hysteria was warranted. Mike Jordan is a machine learning and economics theorist at the University of California, Berkeley, and he put some of my concerns into perspective. Here's our conversation. So I actually think that ChatGPT and Dali and all that will uncover this kind of genius level of the of all humans, not that just the we focus too much on the Einstein genius. Well, I did do a little, you know, once I knew I was going to be interviewing you, I did look on the internet a little bit. I learned, learned a little bit about you. What'd you find? Well, you have a small dong. Ah. Yeah. All right, well, let's take it to the beginning. So what is your primary area of expertise? So I'm known as a machine learning researcher. I'm kind of a historian. I look back to where ideas came from. Machine learning originated in statistics, uh, which originated two to three hundred years ago. And, uh, you know, fantastic, interesting history, you know, started kind of with gambling, people trying to figure out how to beat the, the odds. And then Gauss was looking at the planets and trying to predict where the planets were going to be. So you take a little bit of data and you make a prediction. And so like 200, 300 years ago, there was already, you know, that glimmer of that. Take data and uh, not just write down a law, but um, use the data to make an inference for something you don't know, you'd like to know, make a prediction. The nerds, are they chill? Yeah, I'd say so. And, and the, you know, there's been several generations of them. The first generation was kind of exuberant, let's change the world. I'm going to sit here and create the internet and I'm going to connect up people and wow, that's fantastic and nothing like this has been done. So they were excited by what they were doing and, and true believers. And a lot of them were libertarian. They kind of thought that an individual could change the world and all. And so a little naive. They created these things that have changed the world, but also created lots of issues and problems. And, um, and their naivete kind of has, has continued to live and to hurt us. Why is everyone tripping on chat GBT? I don't know. Um, tripping is kind of a technical term. Uh, the problem is that people, they kind of assume it's like a human. And it's a very natural thing to do because it seems so it can respond to, you know, naturally to, to, to questions. And, you know, if you push it down in certain directions, it will seem kind of human-like. And so then there's a natural tendency, oh, well, my God, it's, 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 it's really human or it's going to be human soon. And, and sadly, there are people in tech who, who kind of, I think, enjoy buying into that, going a little bit close up to the line, say, yeah, it's, it's going to be, we're, we're, fe we're fearful in 10 years. It might get out of control and all that. I just don't, that's just not true. ChatGPT is predicting the next word in the sentence. Just remember, that's what it does. It takes in vast numbers of sentences and predicts the next word in the sentence. And the Dali sort of stuff, you know, predicts the next little piece of the image. So there is a gap of the uh, think about the long term, think about the effect downstream on a person and go back from there, you know, set the stage, uh, think about the emotional connotations of doing this and that. That is really the province of human beings and, and will be for the rest of our lifetimes. It's like yeah. when people talk about mixed martial arts, but they call it the UFC. It's like, look, that's just one particular version or brand for mixed martial arts. So when people say, Chat GBT, they think that's AI, but really, that's right. AI is, yeah, everything. It's all machine yeah. learning that works on like a million yeah. different. So, fronts. for example, in, you go into a hospital, they measure all kind of things about your body, and they give you some kind of a treatment, and you either die or you don't, and all that. All that goes into a big, you know, data Al analysis mm -hmm. algorithm. It goes into a big algorithm, sets of algorithms, and those then make better predictions for the future about if I do it this way or this way, uh, people will live longer. And that's AI. That is as much AI as ChatGPT. Do you think us even putting in intelligence in the catch-all name for it has kind of given us a yeah. instinctive fear of it? Where if we yeah. called it machine learning, exactly. maybe we'd be a bit like cozier with it. We'd be in. a bit more rational about it and a, and a little more reasonable about the implications, the good and the bad, the pros and the right. cons. And so part of the problem here is that um, the big IT companies, Google and so on, uh, they had all kinds of machine learning researchers and engineers building search engines, building you know the Android and so on. Uh, Amazon had tons of them as well, but it, it wasn't sexy enough. And when they needed to kind of go to the next level, they stopped calling it machine learning and they brought back this old terminology of artificial intelligence because it sounded better. It made it more of an impression on Wall Street, and and that's wrong because it, it creates an over both over exuberance, over promising, and it creates over fear. And, and we don't make, you don't make good decisions whether you're either over exuberant or over fearful. So I, I recently listened to a podcast that talked about how there would be 
I'm going to get the numbers wrong, but there was like a 20% decrease in white collar jobs over the next 30 years because of AI, which is a monumental figure. Yeah, I don't believe it. I mean, you, those, those predictions are often wrong. I mean, there, there's certainly uh, a change of, of kinds of jobs. Um, you know, 100 years ago, there was no such thing as a massage right. therapist. Right, you're going to go through, it's just a factor of the time that there's always It's certainly a factor of the time. White collar, blue collar are kind of terms that apply to a certain era. That's really sad that there didn't used to be massage therapists. It really is sad. I think people 100 years ago were really missing that, you know, it's the that, best. that experience. You know, a little bit of odor in the room and nice, nice, you know, bad music. So, you know, again, with electricity, if you uh, 200 years, 100 years ago said someone's going to bring this wire in your home and it has this thing called electricity and it's going to heat up things and make lights. Well, it is going to burn down your home with, with probably, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty serious. And so people were out, you know, fearful and something called Underwriters Laboratory came in and said, our job is to actually bring safety to this. We are going to Bring, we're going to train a bunch of people who are going to go around and test all of these gadgets and devices, and, and we're going to stamp on it under our laboratory. So when you buy it in the store, you put it in your home, and your kids aren't going to die. So your kind of macro angle on all of this is that although the human cost of technical innovation is sad, it's altogether inevitable and positive. It's altogether inevitable and positive, and, and you know that is sad. And and and. and so um, in my technical and intellectual life, I think through the things we're talking about now, but also I'm a you know, a member of the democracy. I'm a person You're on a the planet. Being. I'm a human being. And so do I want you know, government to help out and kind of regulate and slow things down? Yeah, do I? And I want them to be smart enough to know how to do it in the right way and not kill off things that would have been nice opportunities. You, you, you read to me as like an optimistic dude. Are, are, are there cynical people in your field who feel like this is going to bring about negative outcomes? In an interview like this, you're, you're asking hard questions, some of which are overly cynical because, and you're not, it's not you, it's asking them. Yeah, it's I'm it's what you've been reading about and you're yeah. trying to, devil's advocate, what about this, what about this? And so in that kind of setting, I've got to say, no, I'm going to tamp that down. That's not what it is. And here's some other things that are more optimistic. If we did a d different interview and you'd been on one of the exuberant AI bros, right. of which there are many down in Silicon Valley, you would have gotten a very different interview. You told me to chill. And I would have told you to chill and shut up, you know, and, and, and also be more careful. And, Dude, I and, do the and, same you know, thing. I'm always just balancing the environment. I'm totally I'm in, balancing right? the environment, yeah. Right. So trying to find the truth that it's not there or there, it's a little more here and, and, and here in this and moment, you just feel like the national discourse on AI could use a little bit of chill and shit. Could lose a little out. bit of chill, a little bit of reorientation, a little bit of don't listen to the people who are not really sure what they're talking about. And Elon Musk, by the way, does not know what he's talking about, about AI. So what's a good piece of journalism you've seen on AI? Not very many. Almost every piece of journalism I see on AI is not very good. That's, that's the shocking thing right and now. And what are they missing in the conversation? They are all going for this, um, you know, it, there's a danger that it's going to surpass humans. And things that matter, no. Uh, already a computer surpasses me in the ability to calculate integrals or, you know, it surpasses me in tons of ways that I don't care. The goal is to figure out what humans are maybe not so good at that the, human, that the machine could help us be better at. So how do we flip the public discourse where we're amped on AI instead of being concerned about it? Yeah, I don't really know. I do things like this. Talking to you is a good example. Smart interviewer. I, I mean, I get a lot of our requests to do interviews. Um, sometimes with like New York Times or whatever, and I turn them down because I don't sense the interviewer is smart. They're going to ask me the dumb questions and they're not going to dig in and they're going to find some little, uh, you know, gotcha or some, you know, little phrase and yet amp up more of the hysteria because the hysteria sells. Yeah, and I, I want to ask a smart question now, but I, I can't get past the fact that you just told me I'm smarter than a New York <laughs> Times reporter. No, you're smart. You're a smart dude. All right, so for my last question, let's do an experiment. We, you, you are chat GBT. Am I saying that right? I think so, yeah. Let's do an experiment where you are chat. All right, let's see if I can do that. That's can you explain to the audience why they should be excited about a future with ubiquitous machine learning or AI, if you will? <laughs> this, may, this may be more than I can do. So, um. so I'm chat GPT. Uh, well, maybe I'm not. You'll never know whether I'm ChatGPT or not. Um, but my goal is to amaze you and enthuse you and to pretend to be something I'm not, or maybe I'm actually pretending to be something that I really am. Um, now, you should be enthused because you've always been looking for someone to tell you what to do, haven't you? No, not really. Um, well, well, I know everything, and so it's not worth your time to know anything. 
Um, and, you know, that was always a dream of humanity to create something that was bigger and better than him, than anybody else. And here I am. So aren't you excited? I'm excited. I'm ChatGPT. Thank you. That was dark as fuck, dude. <laughs> I decided to go in the dark. Yeah, direction. you went totally. You wanted me to you go went Arthur C. Clarke. On and it, I bro. decided to head in a different. Yeah, direction. dude, like we made our own god that we would be like subordinate to. <laughs> That's what we're all freaking out about. Yeah, you know, what, whatever humans do in the future, I know they will do in poetry, they will do in comedy, they will do in mathematics, and they will be doing music and food. Um, and then those things, that's enough for, you know, and, and plus love, that's enough for, you know, human life to be happy and, 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 and all. And I just want to make sure there's enough of that stuff going around. I really enjoyed talking to you. I've, I've fun, um, learned so much and just, you know, you've made me think in new ways that I'm going to continue to ponder about. I'm just curious what you learned from our conversation. Oh, you know, I think I did have kind of a crude understanding of AI where I was thinking about it in a very kind of anthropomorphized, specific, adversarial kind of idea. And now I'm kind of like excited about all the potential benefits that could come from it. And I've also, it kind of reaffirmed some of my instincts that whatever the national conversation is on something, there's probably a better conversation happening underneath, but that's not exciting to most people. Will you be willing to say machine learning going forward instead of AI? It's Rest assured, bro. I can. It's machine I, yeah, we're on the from same team. That's fantastic. So can I, can I have a hug now? Yeah, I'd love that. All right, all right. Come here. <laughs> Come here. You smell good, dude. You, you too, too, man. Yeah, that yeah, focus on good. odor is paying off, it's, dude. It is not just the experience you had as a single human being. You were put there, stuff came at you, you adjusted your wires, and now you start doing what Shakespeare did. You know, no, Shakespeare didn't take in billions of sentences and generate great plays. Shakespeare uh, took the evolutionary heritage of being a human being and then his life experience on top of that.